Hi again, it's uh, Mark and today after uh, we've had a couple of requests we did a video um, previously about being an observer or a tutor for the Institute of Advanced Motorcyclists and uh, Rossburn Royal Society of Prevention of Accidents and uh, how we get people up to a, an advanced rider standard and things like that and we had a couple of requests from a few people asking us to try and explain about cornering. Uh, we've done a counter steering uh, uh, video before, really hard subject to uh, get the message across, I think it was generally well received but uh, what I'd like to do now is um, on this trip back from Plymouth I'd like to just explain how we do cornering. Now how many times have you ridden behind motorcyclists who are all over the place when it comes to cornering and I'm not talking about you know the, the they can't get the corners right because cornering is, is, is a bit of an art but you know suddenly they're really hard on the brakes they're in what would appear to be the right position which is quite often the wrong position and I'm not going to be going into the specifics of limiting lines and um, all this uh, limiting points sorry and and all this kind of stuff because we've already done a video about that what i'm trying to get across today um, is how to position yourself to get into a bend and talk about the speeds and the gears and coming out of a bend and i've had various people talk to me and some people talk about having three points on the road the, la the lane that i'm riding in now is currently split into three points which is this position one and then if I was in this position this would be position two and if I was in another position I'd be in position three that's at its most basic I've also heard people talk about being having seven positions in a lane well that just sounds to me like it's getting really really complicated so if we just understand that there might be three positions on a on a standard lane then we can go from there and cornering is all about planning it's about looking at the signposts around you realizing what's coming up the amount of people who drive around and completely ignore all the signposts is phenomenal you know and then they wonder why they get themselves into sticky situations where they're going too fast into a corner or you know they weren't prepared for a, a car coming out of a junction to the left or right you know what all sorts of different reasons so a lot of people are signed blind when they drive along and it's really sad really because the signage is there to tell you what's coming up for example there's a sign here that says queues likely because oh, we're going around this bend here now up a hill and there'll be slow trucks on that hill if it's um, if it's busy enough you know so you need to understand what's going on and right in front of me now there's a sign that says 400 meter yards the road goes into one lane uh, and it, but the right hand lane that merges into the left so things like that are vitally important and sure enough there we go we're going around the corner and slow traffic in a 50 mile an hour zone we're now slowing down to I'm doing 35 but at the top of this hill it goes to uh, 40 because there's a slow vehicle in front we're obviously doing a lot slower than that so that information was already there it's just whether you choose to use it or not and that's where the planning and the observations come into riding a motorbike you know they say that the most dangerous roads you'll ever ride on are within 10 miles of your house and that's because you're familiar with the area you understand the, the layout what goes on what happens and you ride accordingly well that's probably the most dangerous roads because you know if you get, your head is shut down until you're 10 miles away you know you're going to have possibility for accidents is, is, is quite high so I've just come out of a village called Landrake, the speed limit was 40 miles an hour through there, I'm just transitioning now into a 50 mile an hour speed limit and the, I'm using this road because it's a pretty good road to actually explain what I'm doing. Now the reason you position yourself on a bend to one side or the other is to get a better view and without discussing the limiting point and all the rest of it, is to get a better view around the bend. Now if I've got a right hand bend coming up here, okay, my view around that bend is not as great on the right hand side of the lane as if it is over here on the left and now if you understand that concept when you're on the right hand bend 
you've been right over to the left hand side of the, of the lane and as we come up this hill there now and we go into a left hand bend you'll see I changed position over into what people call position three so I can see further around the left hand bend now people say you know how far how much further can you see but if you've only got five six meters extra visibility then that's enough you know that might be the difference between you going into the back of a car or a truck that's going slowly or being able to accelerate smoothly out of the bend so that's why we position ourselves and it's all about using all the road so I'm clearly more than two seconds away from the car in front of me and everybody knows the rule nobody nobody breaks a two second rule uh, of, of following behind a car and that's really simple because you need to be able to stop in in a safe distance so you see these motorcyclists who are right at the back sides of cars and trucks you know in a car it's not so bad they can they can see you in their mirrors they certainly can't see you in a truck I know that because I drive trucks so I've got three heads I've got a truck driver's head a car driver's head and a, a motorcycle driver's head so don't be afraid to use all the lane, but don't necessarily stick right out like we're on this left-hand bend now. Don't stick right out on the bend if there's a car on the other side. So pull yourself in a little bit. Still in the position three, if you imagine, of the three, the lane when it's been chopped up into three parts. When I uh, take people out on their observe rides and assess rides and check rides and all sorts of things like that, one of the things I monitor is people's gears and to see what gear they're in. Because unlike a, a car, a motorbike doesn't necessarily have to be in the top gear um, to be riding uh, effectively. If you imagine what I'm saying, when you drive a car, they go up through the gears, up through the gears, up through the gears. And even this BMW is telling me that when I get to a certain speed, I should be changing up. But that's not always necessarily true. The red line on this bike is at 9,000 RPM. And I'd have to be riding like a loon to be riding this bike at uh, 9,000 RPM. Because the best, most efficient part of this engine's uh, uh, rev range, if you want, is around about 4,500. So anything between 4 and 5,000 on the rev counter is perfectly acceptable. The bike's not doing any more miles to the gallon. It's not uh, going to burst itself. You know, the engine's not going to fall apart. So that's where I'm trying to keep the rev range. And if there's gears that are uh, helping me do that, then that's, that's good. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because engine braking is quite important. Um, and that saves you wear and tear on your brake pads. People say, oh yeah, but your engine's getting shafted. Well, do you know what? My last bike I rode for 26,000 miles in 16 months and it hadn't done 3% of the engine's uh, ability you know life lifespan if you want so you're not going to screw the engine over you you're actually aiding the efficiency of the engine if that if that makes sense and that's one of the principles of advanced riding you're in the right gear for the right speed doing what the bike can do safely and it's all about smoothness um, it's difficult to explain in some cases like I've just come around that roundabout there the approach to the roundabout going around the roundabout and coming off it I never used my brakes once and I came around the, the, the roundabout in uh, third gear which is quite high for this bike actually um, the revs were down to about 3,000 but it's, the bike is capable of doing that but what I was relying on was the engine braking that comes up as I was approaching the roundabout and that's important because that means you don't have to use your brakes the bike isn't going to be thrown off balance because if you break hard into a, a, um, a corner the first thing that's going to happen is the front end of your bike is going to go heavy which makes your steering heavier and the back end of your bike gets really light so that means your bike is out of balance if you're just taking your bike off the off the rolling off the throttle and let the engine braking take over then what actually happens is the bike is still in a stable condition and it's just really reducing its speed in a steady safe fashion so here I am I'm built up to uh, 70 miles an hour now I'm just doing an overtake of a slow moving vehicle or I'm trying to because he's now accelerating away from me because it's downhill but I know at the bottom of this hill will be going uphill and he'll slow down again so we're on a dual carriageway now 
for those of you who don't live in the UK, in the UK Jill Carriageway is a road that's got two lanes on each side in opposite directions. And you'll notice my position in the lane is in, if you want, a different split between position two and position three. And that's because I'm passing vehicles. So I'm giving myself plenty of safe distance between the vehicles. Once I've overtaken them, I'm moving them back in. I can actually go into the centre of the lane. I can see way ahead of me, so there's no need to look for, you know, limiting points or anything like that. I'm just riding in the centre of the lane. Now I've got a car that's coming up behind me, you might be able to see it in the mirror. To maintain my safety bubble, I just come over to the left a little bit. So I'm now in sort of position 1-2 of, uh, of the lane. He's gone past, I can now move out. Now I've got a bend coming up, it's a left hand bend, so I move out to the right hand side of my lane, there's nothing behind me overtaking me. I can see further around the bend to continue at the speed I'm at, which is 70 miles an hour. And as the road comes round to the top of the hill, it goes to the right again. So I'm indicating that I'm going past these vehicles. Unfortunately, there's a, a coffin. Once I'm safely past, I come back in again. I love the fact that I've got cruise control on this bike, it makes it so much nicer than having to be worried about twisting the thr throttle all the time, but it gives me a chance to talk. So, here we are driving along, in the middle of the lane, got a, uh, a lay-by coming in from the left, so I can position myself out to the right-hand side of my lane, it's safe to do so, there's nothing behind me. I've gone past that obstruction where a vehicle may have been pulling out, and I've gone back into the centre of the lane. If there were two of us riding together, then we'd split the lane between us and one would ride on one side and one would ride on the other, like you see, um, you know, echelon riding, I think they call it. And we've already done on Ridercam TV a video about that. So, I'm coming around a long sweeping right-hand bend, it's 70 miles an hour, there's no need to move myself into a better position to see, but I've got vehicles coming out on a lay-by and wanting to turn, so I'm indicating out I'm letting that person move out and because they are a hazard which is another vehicle on the road I actually move over to the right hand side of, the, of my lane till I can get past them the issue I've got here is the car in front has now slowed down because he's obviously going to be coming off so I've gone past the car I'm still in the outside of this lane okay so here we are I'm um, Passing a truck, big wind blast off a truck normally, so I stay out on the right hand side of the lane. There's nothing behind me, so there's no need to pull in, there's nothing, I'm not holding anybody up. Go down a, a downhill now, and there's, a, lay, there's a, 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 a road coming in from the left hand side, which is what the signpost is telling me. I'm staying out on the right hand side of my lane, I check that lane, I'm going to go be going past this truck, so I can stay right out here again. As we go down this road about another 400 metres, you'll see the road bends round to the right. But as I'm passing a vehicle that could be an issue for me as a safety issue, I stay over on the, on the right hand side of the lane. Once I've passed him, I can then move back over to the left. And to give myself a better view, I can go right over to the left hand side of the lane to see further around the corner. The road is straightening out, and so I can come back to the middle. You'll notice here that I've got a long sweeping bend and I've actually cut the corner. To give myself a better view around the right hand bend I moved over to the left and stayed to the left rather than follow the contours of the, of the white lines that are marking the road. I have a junction coming from the right here now so I can move out to the right hand side of my lane. Check that junction's clear, there's nothing coming. I can move back into the centre again. Now the road is bending in front of me so I've moved over to the left, there's nothing behind me still. I'm cutting off the bend, if you see, I'm moving right across to the right hand side of the lane. Still nothing behind me. I'm staying out right on the, on the right because I'm going around the left hand bend which is uphill and as a junction comes off just up the hill. 
but as the road starts to unfold in front of me then I can move back across to the to the other side of the road and straighten out the corner so I can see the road ahead now I'm moving back over to the left of my lane and I can see way up past the road up there probably half a mile now so I know I'm okay to be in this position on the road when we get up to the top of this hill uh, there's a roundabout and then we go into a, it's called the Glynn Valley for anybody who knows it it's got a 50 mile an hour speed limit and uh, it's quite a dangerous road there's always accidents on it so but it's a good place to, uh, to show you um, taking bends on narrower roads than I've been on so far in this film so just bear with me when we get to the top of the hill and they will be turning off now it doesn't matter if there's any if the cars are going slower than 50 miles an hour I can still explain it to you so I'm in position 3 on the road I've got a roundabout coming up I've got the reduced speed signs big roundabout I'm coming down to the 300 metre mark checking my mirrors to make sure people have seen me this guy here has not missed, missed it all completely okay he can't force himself out into me it's his mistake it's not mine I don't have to account for all his mistakes and as I didn't impinge him I can carry on now can we round the roundabout I'm indicating right because I'm going right I'm checking behind me I'm coming off left and we're straight into a 40 mile an hour limit which is great because this is a long sweeping bend so I'm out on the right hand side of the road I've got a vehicle coming towards me so I can still move in a little bit so I'm in between position 2-3 if you want on the lane the road is slowly bending round to the right so I'm moving across the lane to the left hand side of it so I can see further round now it's not so critical at these sorts of speeds when you get up to 60 miles an hour which is our national speed limit in the UK then it does become quite apparent why you do this uh, this manoeuvre 30 miles an hour you don't really have to do it it's better to drive in your safety bubble and maintain it in that fashion I've got a car coming from the left so I'll move out to the right hand side of the road so I've put the biggest distance between me and now we're going to increase our speed up to 50 miles an hour and go into this series of bends now it's 50 miles an hour I'm really lucky I can do it in cruise control I can see the right hand bend so I've just cut the corner on the left I'm staying out left nice and wide staying close I'm looking down the road and as soon as I can see that the road bends round sorry to the right I was talking about there the road bends round to the left I've moved over the other side of the road lane to the right hand side car coming up so I just move in a little bit can move back out to the white line again I'm not crossing the white line I'm just on it another car move in a little bit I'm still looking around the bend for the best view and as soon as I can see the next bend in front of me I'm cutting across the road I'm positioning myself for this nice right hand here the road straightens out in front of me I can go out to the right hand side because the road is bending off in the distance to the left and at the end of this little chicane here it goes round to the right it's quite a tight turn so I'm still out on the right I can see the turn start to appear so I move to the left because I'm getting the best view around it I still haven't changed my speed I'm still doing 50 miles an hour haven't changed the gear I'm in fourth gear three and a half thousand uh, yeah three and a half thousand rpm I'm still far over on the left now you might wonder why I'm this far over on this road but it's quite simple if I was to stay like you see some people do out towards the center of the line and you see a lot of motorcyclists do it if there's a vehicle like there was there coming around a big vehicle bearing in mind that I'm going around a right hand bend and I might be leaning over he's coming around a left hand bend I could get slapped in the face by his mirrors so that's why we always stay wide on the lanes now this is a nice sweeping road so I'm over on the left again because it's a, a right hand bend I'm straightening out the road I'm going straight on cutting across the lane this isn't illegal this is exactly what you're entitled to do because you're in charge and once people realize that that's what you're doing they give you the respect you require they're not going to push you and if they do push you let them get out of the way so I'm straightening out the line again I'm staying over on the left because the road goes round to the right I haven't reduced my speed I'm still doing 50 miles an hour so I'm not holding people up 
Okay, nice big truck coming around the bend there. See what I mean about slapping them? Okay, I'm still over on the left hand side. I'm now moving to the right. Now, I don't go all the way across because there's vehicles over that side, so I'm just a little bit shy of that. The bend is tightening because of the chevrons, but I haven't reduced my speed because there's no need to at the moment. I'm coming around the bend. I've seen the next bend, so I've finished with that one, moved over to the left. I'm staying left because this is a long right hand bend that tightens a little bit at the end. Here we go, tightens a little bit there. I still haven't reduced my speed, I'm still doing 50 miles an hour. I'm way over the other side so I'm not affecting anybody and as soon as I'm around that I'm out to the right hand side of my lane because I'm looking for the left hand bend but I haven't gone all the way out because there's traffic out there so I'm keeping my safety distance. Looking way ahead, I can see the road is straightening out. And I'm straightening off the benders now. Now I've got two vehicles, one coming from the left, one coming and turning in front of me, he's turned. So I just position myself in the middle of the lane because that's the safest place to be. Once I'm past that hazard, I move out to the right because the road is going left. And then I'm straightening it up again because now I'm on this bend, I'm looking for the next one. And I'm typically looking as far ahead as the road will let me go. And if I can see gaps in the trees, I'm using that to my advantage as well. Still over on the left-hand side is the left-hand bend. I move across now, lots of traffic still, so I don't go all the way out. But you'll notice that some vehicles do actually pull out of your way. Because I'm telling people that this is what I'm doing. All right, And it frightens some people, but they don't certainly move. So you see I'm cutting the corner. I'm maintaining my safety distance from other vehicles but I'm being efficient because I'm not braking I'm maintaining the speed limit and I'm not holding anybody up the car behind me is about 100 meters behind me He's not, there's very few places to overtake anyway but again we get a little chicane so I cut over to the left because the road goes to the right I'm looking ahead I can see the road is now straightening out so I can move back across. There we go, I'm straightening myself up, I can put myself over the right side of the lane but not too far over because there's quite a lot of traffic coming the other way. If I look way ahead the road is bending right again, I've got a junction from the left but it's clear so I stay over this side. Again I'm cutting off because I can see the road is going round to the left and, and again way ahead of me probably six eight hundred meters in front of me I can see the road is going left I've got a car coming out in front of me who's now just decided to go really really slowly plenty of time to brake I haven't even braked I've just reduced off the uh, throttle down to 40 miles an hour he's pulling away from me now I'm in a nice safe position out on the right towards the right towards the white line okay I can see beyond him and the road straightens so I can straighten out the road as much as I can and look way ahead of me so I can see now that in this position all that line of cars in front of me I can stay in this lane this part of the lane and not have to worry about cutting across to edge things out now I can still see just ahead of it so I can cut across left and I'm cutting back right again right on the white line because there's nothing coming towards the traffic has died off a little bit luckily I'm doing 50 just under 50 miles an hour behind this car keeping a good distance away from him okay I cut that corner there because I could see instantly just beyond it that the road bent round to the right so here I am again I'm out on the right the road is going to the left in about two three hundred meters so I'm way out on the right hand side again up against the white line for the maximum view and there's a vehicle just come into sight so I come in a little bit I can cut right across to the left because it's going right I'm doing 44 miles an hour now because I know this guy's going to break even though you can do the whole road at 50 ok I've changed gear to keep the revs up increase my engine braking He's put his brakes on, but I haven't. I'm over on the left-hand side of the road because I'm going round a right-hand bend that is a bit narrow. 
There's an open junction there, I can see there's nothing on it. He's slowing down in front of me. As soon as we're over the little bridge, I'm looking ahead, it's another right, so I can put myself over on the right. And I'm looking up the road now, way beyond to the right, more than he can see in his little cage in front of me. I can position myself right in the middle of the lane. And what happens at the top of this hill is it goes into two lanes in one direction in my direction and one lane coming the other way. So if there's a, a chance I can overtake. And in that case it goes, the bend starts off with a right, then a left, then a right, then a left. And so I move myself around that lane if I have to. So I'm over on the left, this is the first one coming up now. I'm moving to the right because matey's not moving. I'm up to 50 miles an hour. I'm still using the same principles of being over. The truck coming round, so I'm on the left hand side of my lane to see the furthest way round. I'm moving over to the right now. But not all the way out because there's traffic coming. I'm not going to get past these two vehicles in front of me. So I just stay out here wide because the road is going into one lane. I'm bringing myself back into the middle. Checking behind me making sure people understand what's going on and here I am positioned on the right hand side for the next left hand bend stay out wide but not too wide because I know this is busy still more than two seconds behind this car in front if he shows signs of braking I can always drop a, a gear and I've got maximum engine braking here so I've never have to use my brakes at Technically, I <laughs> say never, but obviously I will. So that's how you go around bends. It's very easy, it's all about being smooth. I mean, I could race up to the back of this car and make like I'm going to overtake him, but I know there's no overtaking along here, so there's no point doing it. So it's good to practice this on a road like this where you're just following the traffic. And it's all about planning. Now, this is a roundabout coming up ahead. I'm going straight over the roundabout into the left hand lane. So even as we're speaking, I'm planning now what's going to happen. There'll be vehicles coming all the way around. I can see there's a white van coming towards me. The two cars in front have slowed down. So what I'm doing now is adjusting my speed so I don't necessarily have to stop. Everything's clear. I'm following the lane around. And here I am in the left-hand lane on the right-hand side because I am going around to the left. I stay out nice and wide. And we're now coming onto a dual carriageway. I'm still out wide, the car behind me isn't trying, trying to overtake because he knows what I'm doing. I'm still out wide, I'm out wide now because I'm joining a dual carriageway, I can see straight, I cut straight ahead onto the dual carriageway, it's clear. Pull out, indicate, job done. Look at that, I've gone all the way through the Glen Valley, I've done about 15 miles of ride in there. Never touched my brakes. Averaged about 50 miles an hour through that road that's uh, a 50 mile an hour road. So that's a good that's a good ride. Back on a dual carriageway. I'm on a dual carriageway now for another 30 miles. So uh, we'll call it quits. So if you like the video, give us a big thumbs up. And Toby will put some trickery on somewhere to show you how to uh, subscribe to us. And we'll see you in the next video. If you've got any other questions you'd like us to try and demonstrate, I'm not saying we're riding gods or anything like that, we have an, a lot of experience and there's obviously lots of different ways of doing it, but what I will show you is a safe way to do stuff. See you in a bit!